Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. Let's talk about the power of flash frames in Adobe Premiere Pro. All right, by flash frames, it means anything that flashes as a frame. It could be a solid or an image or a video. Let me show you what I've created and then we'll break it down. All right, so you probably noticed there was a, a couple of different kinds of flash frames from single white to some blend modes. Uh, but I also want to point out that uh, the stock video in this was provided by Adobe Stock, the premier supplier of stock video images, motion graphics templates, illustrations, and 3D objects. Find the perfect asset for your next uh, project. And the music, of course, is from my friends over at artlist.io. Dear Lord, what a great uh, music track, especially that opening part, very growly. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is drop a white mat on top of another track. A white mat is just like a black mat, except it's a different color. You can choose a black uh, mat or you can choose a color mat. The color mat could be any color and I'll show you that right here. So we'll go to this spot here. Let me zoom in and as we go over top of this, it's two frames long and it's 100% white. Because it's so quick, two frames, it doesn't look like you're looking at just a, a flash because our brains uh, retain some of the image before the frame and after the frame. So we actually blend that ourselves. So let me zoom out and I'll just play that again. And if I make this too long, now you see it's just a big white screen and it makes no sense. If we zoom all the way in to frames, you can see how many frames this is. So when we're zoomed in this close, we're snapping it one frame at a time. So when I'm at two frames, that seems to be the right amount. If we go to one frame, let's look at that. That's also good. One frame's just a little quicker. It's just a different energy. So how do we create these? Down at the bottom of the project panel, this little button here, we choose a color mat. It's going to make it the frame rate and frame size of our sequence. And now we get to pick the color of this. So it can be any color we want. When we make this white, it's white. And of course, we'd name it white, as I've done over here. And when you double click on it, it will open to white. You'll notice I have another one in here called Dirty Green. We'll get to that in a second. One thing you have to be careful of is if you have one mat and you, you've dropped it into multiple places, if you change the color of one, it's going to change all of them. This could be very useful if you want all the flashes to change from white to blue then you only make one and you change it. But as you can see, I've got two because I wanted some white and I wanted some green. Okay, so you just literally drag that in wherever you want it. Let me drag it here. And you just change the size of it. And place it. And it doesn't even need a blend mode. It's just, you know, the, the clip itself. But if you wanted to, you could select it and go to the effects controls and open up opacity. You could change the opacity so it's not 100% covering it. Did we even see that? Now we're not even seeing that. At 23%, we're not seeing that. So 80, 83, we're seeing it. Let me make this one. So that's one thing you could do. And you could also 
change the blend mode. So when something is normal, it means it covers what's underneath it. All of these other blend modes are like the blend modes in Photoshop, if you use them. They use different kinds of math to create a certain look. So something like multiply, you'll see it's going to disappear because it's white over top, but multiply makes it disappear, whereas screen is the mathematical opposite. So it shows up. Uh, another good one is overlay, but not necessarily, see a little bit, but you can experiment with these. You can actually just put your mouse over top of them and go through each one of these and change what they are. And then there's the dark ones down at the bottom, which may or may not make sense. So lots of different ways that we can uh, affect these flashes. Um, if we go down to the end here, where we had lots of them, you can see I've placed a lot of these right at that point where the, the next music starts and I've cut the track here. And I tried to put them in, in non-equal areas because I want more of a chaotic look. So I'm not gonna put them in every five or, or 10 frames. I'm just manually just moving them around. Uh, they all, or they're all the same duration. You could change that if you want, but that gives that, that flashing kind of effect. Now, way over here on the right, you may have caught this. There was something different. When we roll over this one, you'll see something very different. The frame is actually moving and it's scaling up. This is a real uh, typical glitchy kind of effect that happens um, when you want this kind of a, a look and this kind of energy. So you'll notice that I have two things happening here. We zoom in. One is the dirty green. So this is the color that I chose, which was this dirtyish green. And the blend mode I'm using is all the way down to the bottom. It's divide. Um, and there's just, I, how did I come up with that? I picked a color, which um, I, I just guessed at, dirty green. And then I started going through all of the different uh, blend modes until this one came up. And then when I went and tried something other than dirty green, it didn't really work. So I'm, in, I'm going to leave this where it is. I'm on hue and I'll move this around to different hues. So now this is that blue and you can see it, it just doesn't work. What if we went to a more purpley red? No, it doesn't work. There's something about the green and the video and the divide that works. And sometimes you'll find this, you'll, you'll just pick something and for whatever reason it works. Now below that, is an adjustment layer. And you can add an adjustment layer simply by clicking here and add an adjustment layer. Adjustment layers don't do anything by themselves. You add effects to the adjustment layer. The reason I'm doing this is I want to change the position and the scale. I want it to seem like the frame is jumping in the camera, but only for a short segment. And if I do that to the video, it will do it to the whole video. And if you don't know to use an adjustment layer, you might cut the video and then apply the effect for the cut point. The problem is, what if you wanted to move that, that effect? Then you'd have to set rolling edits on both. It's a huge pain. So instead, add an adjustment layer. And you can see over here, I've got uh, a position change. And that, you can see over here, I've got transform added. and. You, you can't use the motion setting up here to change position. You have to add transform and it's in your effects. Transform right down there. And you add that to an effect and add that to the adjustment layer. If you move motion, it moves the position of the adjustment layer, not the effect. So the transform effect is move and position and rotation of, of just what's happening right here. So you can see I've got keyframes moving this around. So it, it, it's changing the, the overall position. And when you're doing this, you're, you're moving this around, changing the scale, but it only happens in that spot. So the combination of the ch color change and that movement gives you that effect. 
And here's where it really becomes fun. Let's copy this two more times and make it completely different. So I'll select both of these. I'm holding Alt on Windows, Option on Mac, drag over here. I'll leave the green, but I'll go to the adjustment layer and I'm gonna go to these, um, you could select all and delete these and start again, but I'm just gonna go over here and start messing around with these and the position, scale, just to make this one look different. Let's copy another one. I'm gonna make this one closer. And again, for this one, let's really blow this up, really mess it up. Go to the next one. So now we've got some huge changes. Now let's play this back, this segment here. Wow, look at that. That's the kind of feeling you want, that chaotic kind of look. And if I wanted to, I could change the, the dirty green to a different color. So flash frames pretty easy. Let's show you one more effect that we can add, and that's adding a video over top of this. So I happen to be, uh, I've got some stuff from Rampant Design, and these are glitch frames that you can purchase. So they look like video glitches. I'll drag that on top. Uh, and this one happens to be a, a large 2K clip, and it already has its transparency set. So that's just that kind of an effect. And I can right click and set to frame size and it's going to make this a little bit smaller to fit the frame. But you can see we've got this video glitch. Let's try the other one right after it. And again, I'll right click and set to frame size. All right, so let's play this all back. There we go. Let's stick this one right near the end. So there you go. Flash frames, it, they're really, really simple things, but they can be very, very artistic the way that you use them. You'll notice that, that I did a lot of things by guessing, haphazard, random, chaotic. I think when you're working in this kind of mode, you want that, unless you're trying to match the music. So there, there's a balance between, whoa, this is crazy, and oh boy, that's the where the bass drops. That's when I want that to happen. So I want it chaotic, but at that point, maybe I'll move things over and position them right on top. And that, again, is why... I used everything on top of the, the video on, on other tracks because it's easy to move around. The video has nothing on it. In fact, there's an adjustment layer on the whole video, I don't know if you noticed it, to change the color. And I preferred to do that. Uh, I could have used master clip effects too, but this, this whole thing changes the video. If I turn the adjustment layer off, that's what the original video looked like. And this is my adjustment layer. I don't think the original is as interesting. I have this effect that has a few things on it. Let me just show you what I've got on this. So if I turn this on and off, the basic color correction, I've got nothing going on there. Uh, in the creative section, I'm using a, a blue steel look. If we turn that on and off, you can see it's a huge difference. And I'm also using a vignette on the other end. And I'm also reducing the saturation here a little bit, because that's the way it is, it's saturated. So I'm pulling that down just to give that dirty, kind of more industrial look. And I just thought that that look, combined with the flash frames, gave this a great look that I think just works. I'll play the whole thing back to see what happens with our new uh, edits on it.
one last thing I should show you is um, you'll notice that there are some segments that are slow and some that are normal speed. This particular uh, stock video clip from Adobe Stock is a high speed shot. So when you download this, everything is slow motion. Um, that's why you get beautiful blending. There's not a stepping going on. This clip is beautifully shot with the slow motion. So if you right click on a clip, so you can see I've cut it up into pieces. And if I right click and change the speed, and I change the speed to my estimate was 300%, then this becomes real time speed, normal speed. And this gives me the benefit of this dreamy feel with as when she's starting to walk toward the camera, I wanted it faster, quicker, but I didn't want it sped up. I wanted it to look natural. So it's the same footage with different speed ramps or speed values on them, not actually ramping it. There's just different speed values on it. So one clip of adjustment layer and a bunch of flash frames and some killer music from Artlist IL. And man, you got a great piece. So there you go. Uh, if you're new to Video Revealed and you found this informative, take a moment and subscribe. You want to support us more, you can do that through PayPal. There's a link in the description and one on the front of the channel. We love our wonderful PayPal donors. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith, and I'm here to show you you've got things inside Premiere Pro that you can use already to make your stuff pop.